so I want to build a script that allows me to follow the logic of my roll of the die game here called pig and a quick refresher I'm going to roll a single die if I roll a two three four five or a six I get to keep on rolling as many times as I want I can roll again and again and again however if I roll a one it's the computer's turn and I lose all my points that I had just been building up. If I'm rolling twos, threes, four, fives, and sixes, I can decide to hold, I keep the points, and the computer rolls. The computer will roll five times, and if it rolls a one, it's my turn. However, if it makes it through those five rolls, the computer's t turn is tallied up, the computer gets to keep those points, and it's the player's turn. If at any point the player or the computer reaches 100 points, then that particular player wins, and then the choice is shown to the player to either quit or play another game. So let's take a look at the script that will, that will perform this logic. And again, remember, script logic is about performing this logic and not having any other strange logic occur that I didn't want to have happen. So let's switch over here to PowerShell. Okay. And I'm going to show you this. We'll build this script here. Okay, so I'm going to create a file for my script. Let's see here. Notepad we'll use. And I'm going to call it Pig. The name of the roll of the die game is Pig. And now I'm going to copy the pieces of my script in bit by bit and explain the purpose and the and the uh, the method behind the logic. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to add to my script are the script variables at the top. So I'm going to put my script variables at the very beginning of my script. Script variables can be accessed from anywhere inside the script, from inside of any function. Uh, notice I've used the pound here. These, the single pound is a comment. So this is all comments right here to explain what my variables mean. So the first one is P, player score, then the computer score. Whether or not they want to quit is managed by this. How many points to win is set in the variable $W. So you can actually adjust that if you want to have a shorter game. And then to see if player 1 has won, win is going to be set to 1 for that. So here are my variables that I'm going to use across this script. Okay, the next part of the script is going to be the functions. So the first function I've added here you can see is a function called roll. And this function is going to use the system random object in order to create random numbers. So anytime you call the roll function, it creates a variable called r, which is a new random number. Against that random number, it calls the next method. And when you pass it 1 and 7 here, what that really ultimately gives you is a random number between 1 and 6, including 1 and 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So you always have to go 1 above in order to get the full range of what you're looking for. And here you can see this curly brace ends my function. So I have a comment at the end signifying that the function has ended. Okay, next I need a way to display my score. So I've added another function. And it's called display score. Alright, it's going to put a couple of blank lines in here and then it's going to write out the player's score. And notice this particular, the, uh, the syntax here. It uses dollar $script colon p which says to use the script level variable p as opposed to another variable called p which could potentially exist inside these curly braces that's called scripts uh, a variable scope so every variable has a scope up here you have a variable p the scope is everything everything on this script however i could also inside this script if i wanted to declare another dollar p and that would be local to that particular function. We'll talk about local variables at some other point, but uh, 
right now just notice that I have the display score function and it's going to print out the score every time I call it. Now keep in mind functions have to be called. These, uh, these things that I have so far on this screen and in this script they will not run on their own they they have to be called by some other executable code and that's going to be the main body of our script which we will get to shortly okay so the next function I'm going to add in here is the function play again which as I mentioned is going to if we look at my diagram here it's represented in my activity diagram down here as show choice. So that choice is going to be to play again or to quit. So let's go back into my script. So let's take a look at this function. This function uh, is going to offer me a question, do I want to play again? And then it's going to use an if statement. So here's an example of script logic. If the answer to play again is equal to and notice that syntax there so if the variable equals yes or y then it will run the first set of curly braces so if it's not y the else block fires off and we get thanks for playing and the script will exit but if you had said yes up here what you will see is the score gets reset and we will continue this in another video